Let's run through the simplified balance sheet of a bank that we're going to be using to show how banks play a role in the creation of money. Up here you can see that I have bank A, just a simple bank, where we've broken their balance sheet into assets and liabilities. Now a very complex T account, a very complex balance sheet, will have a ton of different assets and a ton of different liabilities. For this class, what we're interested in is just a couple. So on the asset side, we're talking about things that the bank owns or the things that the banks will get repaid, something that's of value to them. So the assets end up being any sort of reserves. So you could think of reserves as that cash on hand, either in the vault or at the Federal Reserve. And also the loans. Now the reasons why the loans are an asset is because if a bank were to give out, let's say, a $10,000 car loan, that's still an asset on their balance sheet because hopefully they're going to get that money repaid. Now for you and I, if we were to do our balance sheet, our car loan would be a liability because a liability is what people need to pay back or what they owe. For a bank, the liability is going to be the level of deposits. When you and I go to the bank and we deposit money, the bank is liable to give us that money back. Let's just dig a little bit deeper into this. These two sides have to be equal, so that's something you may want to know while you're going through these types of, of problems. And right here, these reserves, these reserves can get split up into what's known as excess reserves and required reserves, because the Federal Reserve has some required reserve ratio that you must keep. So you're required to keep a percentage of your deposit. So the overall level of reserves is equal to those required reserves plus any excess reserves. The required reserves right here is that required reserve ratio multiplied by your deposits. One last way to think about this is when there's a deposit that goes into the bank. So let's say there's some deposit that goes into the bank. That's going to get split up by the bank. It's either going to become a reserve or it's going to become a loan. The reserves are either classified as required reserves or excess reserves. And again, this required reserve is going to be a percent of the deposits. Understanding this layout is going to help you so much as we work through this lesson.